Hey, good evening, and welcome. It is time once again for the, another exciting episode of CU Immigration here on WRFU LP Urbana, 104.5 FM. I will be your host for this evening. My name is Mr. Garza, and I'm here to let you know that WRFU is an open forum for the Urbana Champaign community. Views expressed are those of the speakers and are not intended to represent WRFU, UCIMC, Urbana Socialist Forum, or UPTV, as we like to say on the slightly tilted, sorry, the camera is set up at an angle, slightly tilted version of uh, the TV version of the show, or something like that. Yeah, anyway, uh, I haven't been on for a, a while, you know, it's one of those things. <clears throat> It's uh, it's hard to talk myself <laughs> into going out in the winter. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, for me, <clears throat> summer, yeah. I just, uh, you know, roll out the door, roll over somewhere, hang out for a while, roll on back. It, you know, it's like not that big a deal. But in winter, it's like I have to really think about it. Uh, do I really want to go out? Is it really important enough to drag me out? So, yeah, I, I don't really have a good excuse other than uh, it's been cold, and I have not felt like leaving my home. Once I get into it, <clears throat> I get back. I want to stay there. It's dark. Eh. Anyway, uh, immigration. Yeah, so we all know about the, the shutdown, the big government shutdown over the wall. Um, what's truly astounding, if you think about it, is how far this weird notion of a wall has gone from its earliest days as just this uh, kind of idea, sort of a, <clears throat> I don't know, the wall was metaphor for all things that uh, we don't want otherness here in our country, you know, this kind of notion that a lot of uh, Trumpian kind of supporters had that, uh, you know, we're, it's, we're finally saying no more to this strange people coming here with their strange customs and languages and, and altering us and changing us and, and trying to turn us into some, something we're not, you know. That kind of idea that um, seemed to be pretty popular amongst a certain group. I mean, if you think about all the people in the U.S. and then you figure all the people that vote which is like, what, a half, maybe? Slightly less than half, something like that. And then of that, slightly less than half of that is vote, tends to vote Republican. And of the, of the ones that tend to vote Republican, eh, most, but not all of them, are into Trump in some way or another. Uh, so the actual proportion of people who feel this way or think this way, you know, and, and want to sort of make a, a big, bold international statement, kind of like a big middle finger to the world saying, we don't want you here. We don't want you messing around with us. We don't, we're, we're happy the way we are or the way we were or the way we imagined that we were. Uh, for those that like to think of the good old days <laughs> and, and tell themselves that it was something other than what it really was. Um, or maybe it, maybe it was that way for them or they thought it was. I don't know. Whatever it is, but it, it's a very small portion of the people in this country. But they're very loud and they're very politically active. And... Um, <clears throat> They managed, with the help of uh, the Russians, <laughs> to gain the presidency and to, uh, I don't know, they just, they, they've, they've sort of taken over the Republican Party. So you've got, even though there's still a large portion of the Republican Party, the Mitch McConnell types, who are in it only for the, the tax cuts, you know, basically, uh, they don't really care about anything else. It's just tax cuts and, and welfare for the wealthy, essentially, is, is their whole thing. They go along with it, 
because I think they're, they just have no moral compass, basically. Uh, but, it, you know, it's just interesting how much traction, anyway, my whole point was getting around to how much traction this sort of notion of the wall has gained um, over time that the entire kind of Republican Party will sort of quietly support this idea of, of wasting enormous amounts of money, uh, creating all sorts of uh, environmental problems, and just basically, I don't know, flushing our international image down the toilet, if, in, if, if that can possibly be done any farther than it already has been done by this uh, orange-faced person. Uh, it just it, it just really surprises me because when it was first discussed, I, I would have thought that everybody would have just gone, oh, yeah, whatever, and, and, and leave it. And that's kind of how they reacted to it for a long, long time. But it just, he keeps pushing and he keeps pushing and he keeps pushing. And, uh, and the, his whole party is like, well, okay, you know, he's, he's giving us our judges and our tax cuts, so uh, whatever, you know, <laughs> we'll go along with it, I guess. It's just, it's amazing. Anyway, um, so anyway, the the government shut down. We all lived through that, the, the horrors of it, of people going without paychecks and all that stuff. I, I don't know how horrible that is, but it was pretty bad and pretty stupid and pretty pointless. Um, and anyway, so it, it, he keeps pushing. He... There's only one he that I can uh, talk about when we're talking about immigration is, is, is that person in the White House. Uh, he keeps pushing, and not enough people are pushing back, I guess. You know, like the entire Democratic Party is pushing back. Uh, most, most news networks, except for faux news and, and a couple of the right wingish uh, groups like that who still, you know, who go along with pretty much anything he says, but everybody else is sort of going, eh, but this isn't true. It, it just, it's weird how far you can go. Uh, I'll put it this way. It's weird how far you can go and how much you can do, how much damage you can do um, when there are enough people who just don't care enough to, to respond to it. It's just surprising, you know? You would think that if someone starts, like if somebody walked into your house and started just tearing things up, you would do something about it. You would, would uh, fight back or you would call the police or you would do something. But it's like, you know, you have a, a family and like half your family is just sitting there going, well, you know, they're tearing stuff up and you're the only one going wait what what is this <laughs> stop this you know it, it's what it feels like sometimes it's just like I feel a lot of the time like I look around me and I see people who are just going eh well you know like it, if it doesn't affect them personally they don't care which is really surprising but anyway that, that wasn't my point that I I just kind of fell upon it as I was considering this whole notion of the wall and how it's gone from being this sort of rhetorical uh, tool for describing a feeling about otherness to an actual physical, give me billions of dollars, I want to build this actual structure. It's it's turned into that, and and people talk about it like that, and it's it's sort of morphed, <laughs> I guess you could say, in this very strange way into a reality that uh, is just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It defies logic, I guess, and I know the history books are going to be really cruel on this period, and they're going to wonder what was going on. The future historians are going to be looking back going, what in the world were people thinking at this time? And I can say, as someone who was here at this time, I don't know. 
I know what I'm thinking, but I don't understand what so many people are doing, wandering around going, eh, well, eh, I don't know. You know, it just, it's really surprising. So anyway, um, I thought I'd start out with, with a, a, a story here. The title kind of says it all. It's Trump's immigration statistics are challenged by experts. Now that's a, you know, a nice media way of saying uh, Trump lied again. But instead of Trump lying again or Trump lying about immigration again, they have to kind of pretend that there are, there's a possibility, like there's a faint possibility that there is some truth to what he's saying even though pretty much everyone knows that he just makes stuff up. It's, it's amazing. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> I'll read it to you and then we can discuss it. So it says, uh, President Trump capo came away empty-handed for now after the longest federal government shutdown in American history failed to pressure Congress into funding his long-promised border wall. Purportedly, purportedly, not purportedly, purportedly to stop an inflow of drugs and crime from Mexico. But he is not done making his case on immigration. On Sunday, he rattled off several figures on Twitter about how many undocumented immigrants there are in the United States, how much they cost the country financially, and how many had illegally voted in Texas. There were already many problems with Mr. Trump's assertion that undocumented immigrants disproportionately bring with them more drugs and crime. And several experts said they had concerns with the figures he disseminated on Sunday. Very, very careful and cautious the way they're speaking about this. Oh, uh, I have to go up. Sorry. Uh, uh, the White House did not respond to a request for a comment. Of course not. In one tweet on Sunday, Mr. Trump said that 58,000 non-citizens voted in Texas, with 95,000 non-citizens registered to vote. He was citing an investigation that Texas officials had publicized days earlier, but that Democrats in the state immediately questioned. So this, interesting, uh, editorial aside, interestingly, <clears throat> the truth is now, they said one thing, and these guys said something else. There's no, no one saying anything specifically. It's just... <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm just baffled today. Sorry. Okay, so the investigation by the Texas Secretary of State's office said that 95,000 people who were registered to vote in the state had at some point told a law enforcement agency that they were not citizens. Out of that number, 58,000 had voted at some point since 1996. Politicians and voters advocates are asking officials to investigate both figures. Quote, because we have consistently seen Texas politicians conjure the specter of voter fraud as pretext to suppress legitimate votes, we are naturally skeptical. Representative Rafael Anchia, a Democrat in the State House, told the New York Times. And I have another story about this, which I'll get to right after that, so we can see about those numbers. But anyway, even if the numbers are deemed ac accurate, those 58,000 voters could have become citizens before casting ballots. More than 50,000 people were naturalized in Texas in 2017, according to the Department of Homeland Security. We have a reason to distrust these numbers said Andre Segura, the legal director of the ACLU of Texas. There's a long history of these numbers being inaccurate. Voter fraud is extremely rare. In Florida, the administration of the former governor, Rick Scott, had tried to purge non-citizens from voter rolls in 2012. It started with a list of 180,000 voters based on driver's license data, according to the Tampa Bay Times. Ultimately, 85 people were removed from the rolls, according to the newspaper. Uh -huh. In another tweet, Mr. Trump said that the cost of illegal immigration so far this year, oh my God, I can't even count that high, <laughs> million, billion, 18 billion, 959 million, 495 thousand, 168 dollars. The cost Friday was 603 million, 331 thousand, 392 dollars. It is not clear where Mr. Trump arrived at those figures. They track with a tweet from last month in which he declared that the country loses $250 billion a year on illegal immigration. But several experts said those figures were far too high. There's little research on how much undocumented immigrants 
cost the United States. The highest costs would generally be related to education and health care. But many undocumented immigrants pay taxes and are typically barred from receiving many of the costliest benefits, like Medicaid. No study seems to comprehensively address a net cost, instead focusing on either the costs or the benefits. They tend to talk past each other, unfortunately, said Randy Capps, the director of research for American programs at the Migration Policy Institute. The National Academy of Sciences concluded in 2016 that immigration, both legal and illegal, benefited the economy. It said that the average immigrant cost state and local governments about $1,600 a year from 2011 to 2013, but that their children and grandchildren paid far more in taxes than they consumed in public services. Alex Norwaste, Nowaste, Nowaste, I don't even know how to pronounce that, N-O-W-R-A-S-T-E-H, Alex Nowaste, a senior immigration policy analyst at the Cato Institute, said the highest figure he had seen came from the Federation for American Immigration Reform, which favors restricting immigration. It has said undocumented immigrants cost the country at least $116 billion per year. The Cato Institute disputes that figure, which Mr. Nowerste said did not take into account the economic benefits of undocumented immigrants. He and others have questioned the group's methodology. There's no basis to any of those numbers about the fiscal cost, he said. The president's numbers are even twice as bad. <clears throat> uh -huh. Mr. Trump also claimed that in the United States there are at least 25,772,342 illegal aliens, not the 11 million that have been reported for years. Again, several experts said Mr. Trump's numbers were too high. It appears that Mr. Trump is making his claim based on a study conducted by researchers affiliated with Yale University and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which estimated the number at 22 million. Starting with an estimate in 1990, the researchers modeled how the population would change in future years based on immigration rates, demographic change, and deportations, among other factors, eventually arriving at the 22 million estimate. The conclusions of that study, published in the journal PLOS 1 in September, have been challenged, with some questioning whether it underestimated the number of immigrants who had left the country. The researchers have also acknowledged that their results diverge from existing estimates. Most other studies say the number is around 11 million or 12 million. The Pew Research Center estimated that it was about 10.7 million in 2016. In 2015, the Department of Homeland Security estimated the number to be 12 million. There's been no evidence of a new rapid increase of the population, Mr. Cap said. William Frey, a demographer at the Brookings Institution, said the methodology used by Pew had been vetted over decades. They have a general sense that what they are doing is reasonably okay, he said of the Pew researchers. I trust them. They have been doing this for a long time. <clears throat> so this story dances around. This is how they report on this guy, and, and it's one th reason that it's problematic. So they dance around these things. We don't know where Trump gets his numbers. We don't know what he means. And that is a very fair way of saying, this doesn't make any sense. Um, I can find no justification for this. He never offers justification. He just says stuff. And knowing that over and over and over again, uh, even the media, even critical media, will give him the benefit of the doubt and go, well, we're not sure why he said that. We're not sure where that's coming from. And um, that's a huge thing. Like, think of yourself as a little kid. Remember some time that somebody, you know, did you take that last piece of candy and, you know, you lied about it. You're like, oh, no, no, I wasn't, I wasn't in the room. I didn't take it. You know, you knew you were lying. Now, at the time, you have two parents, let's say, and you, <laughs> and this candy, 
your parents know each other pretty well. They they don't really like candy that much. You're the only one that likes the stuff, and uh, you know you're you're fighting an uphill battle there, because they're pretty much like okay. We didn't take it. Nobody else came in. You're the only one who would have taken it, and you're saying you didn't. Uh, they're not really buying that uh, that argument. But what if you had a whole, you know, <laughs> media that goes, well, we're not sure why little Johnny said that he didn't take the candy. We're not sure where that comes from. You know, giving you enough of a benefit of a doubt that maybe you're basing it on something. Uh, that's, that's like an enormous boost for somebody who's just making things up, as uh, this orange person does. And it's really detrimental. I mean, I don't know how else they can do it, honestly, because if you don't know of your own knowledge that something is untrue, even though you know the person saying it is is used to just making things up, and um, and it's pretty clearly untrue. You can't find any corroboration for it, but you don't know of your own knowledge, and you can't prove of your own knowledge that it's not true. Then it is the polite, the reasonable, the respectful thing to say, well, I don't know why so-and-so said this, but I will tell you that they did say it. I will affirm that this person did say this thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's damage that I'm not sure how they could avoid allowing it to happen. Um, it would really help if all the other people who knew it, that it wasn't true, but don't want to say so for political reasons, you know, for partisan political reasons, it would help if they would say, well, you know, that's not true. <laughs> so that it doesn't become one side says nothing and the other side says it's not true and then people go, well, it's just those guys attacking these guys and they they don't I don't know, they don't they don't credit it anymore because th so then it becomes uh, us against them kind of thing. And so by virtue of that ridiculous sort of group identity uh, thing that's going on, it's elevated to maybe it is true status, even though pretty much everybody knows that it isn't. So that is a real big problem, and I'm not sure, anyway, like I said, I'm not sure how we're going to recover from that, except that I'm hoping and assuming that in the next election everyone will kind of take honesty as their standard and say, well, unlike this previous administration, I will be honest, and here's how you know, and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, so speaking of Texas, jumping back again, so earlier I said I had a, an article that went with that uh, last bit about the Texas uh, non-citizen voting numbers, and here it is. Um, it's entitled, Texas Bogus Non-Citizen Voter List Included Naturalized Election Staffer. Mm -hmm. So, Texas's list of suspected non-citizen voters was so sloppy that among the people it flagged was an El Paso County election staffer whose naturalization party the county's election administrator recalled attending a couple of years ago. The staffer's presence on the list, which Texas Republicans and President Trump have baselessly touted as showing tens of thousands of non-citizen voters, was highlighted in a lawsuit filed Monday alleging that state election officials violated the Constitution and the Voting Rights Act. The error was reported by the Texas Tribune, where El Paso County Election Administrator Lisa Wise said she spotted the staffer's name on the list of 4,152 names provided to her by the state. Quote, we had a naturalization party for her, Wise told the Tribune, which reported the staffer was naturalized in 2017. She had gone and gotten her driver's license, I think, four years ago. Local election, election, not election, local election officials in Texas have been scrambling since Texas Secretary of State David Whitley put out on advisory on January 25th, indicating that the state 
by comparing voter registration records to the records kept by Texas Department of Public Safety, which issues driver's licenses and other IDs, had found 95,000 potential non-citizens on the voter rolls, 58,000 having cast a ballot in the last 22 years of elections. Civil rights advocates and election policy wonks quickly noted that such an approach is ripe for false positives, particularly among naturalized citizens who may have applied for a driver's license before their naturalization. Nonetheless, the Secretary of State instructed local officials to vet the list themselves by sending notices to suspected non-citizen voters requiring they show proof of citizenship. Those who don't respond to the notice within 30 days can then be removed from the voter rolls under the Secretary of State's guidance. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton tweeted the numbers, as did President Trump, who further mischaracterized what the state had actually found. And the uh, tweet was, voter fraud alert. <laughs> How's that for an introduction? The Texas Secretary of State discovered approximately 95,000 individuals identified by DPS as non-U.S. citizens have a matching voter registration record in Texas, approximately 58,000 of whom have voted in Texas elections. Any illegal votes deprive Americans of their voice. Ah. So nothing biased about that. Anyway, since then, the list has been found to be riddled with hundreds of duplicates and thousands of citizens. Monday's lawsuit filed by several voting rights organizations, organizations is at least the second lawsuit the state is facing for how it handled the allegations. The lawsuit accuses Texas of treating naturalized citizens as second-class citizens and of imposing on them a discriminatory burden by forcing them to show proof of citizenship at the risk of their voter registrations being purged. So there's a little something about that. So we have the theme of the show, <coughs> I guess, you could call it fake news. I, it, it irks me to use that expression because that has been co-opted by uh, someone who is very much wanting to pretend that a lot of the news that exists, or at least the uh, critical news, is just made up stuff. They're just making it up. So according to uh, this person and to several other People, I've seen other people make comments in online forums and things about this sort of thing, stating basically like, well, you can't trust any of the mainstream news organizations. They just make stuff up. And they then trust, apparently, the non-mainstream news organizations, <laughs> who, in fact, sometimes are actually making stuff up. <coughs> so that's pretty bad, you know, when you have competing versions of the truth. It's one thing to have complete competing explanations of what's going on. Um, competing descriptions of how things happened, but it admitting what happened and what didn't happen. This happened, and here's our description of how it happened, versus this other description of how it came about. That's one kind of disagreement that's pretty pretty standard. You know, you're standing on one side of the street and I'm standing on another. And uh, there's we hear a crunch and we both turn and we see two cars have, have run into each other. 